Have you ever looked at something and wondered what it is made of? What is going on inside? Well, about 2,000 odd years ago, the philosophers also asked that question. And they wondered. And the philosophers from years ago had also wondered what is on. Some of them actually took like a piece of clay, rubbed it in their hands, and it came fine dust. And then they said, okay, it seems like things consist of something very small. And they started talking about a Thomas. And it had dunked now the clay and fine sticks up break it that was done it by a clean diokis. But some of the other main philosophers uh -uh, rejected it. But the other philosophers had it for a verb. And then, not too long ago, like 100 odd years ago, a British scientist, Dalton, came along and he did some experiments. Dalton had come, an Englishman, and he had a few experiments done, and he then concluded that all things do consist of small little things, and he called them atoms. Atome. He actually went along and actually showed how they combine and they got some ideas and we still use some of his ideas. Van sy ideas gebruik ons vandag nog steeds. Then some Englishmen discovered electrons. And where do electrons come from? Now, an Englishman electron ontdek. Now, where come die toe vandaan? The electrons are much smaller. So, after some more research, another Englishman called Thompson came with his idea. Now, Dalton said the atom was a solid ball. It was so solid, you can't take a knife and cut it smaller. So, they called it the billiard ball model. Dalton had said that was a solid ball. It can't it not find a kind of snake. It did not find a ball with the algorithm. But be a snooker ball. Snake, can you cut a billy ball with a knife? Bit of a challenge. Thompson came along and Thompson said that the electrons must somehow be in this thing. So Thompson said the atom must be a ball that is positively charged. The whole thing is positive. And then inside it, there are electrons like raisins in raisin bread. So it's rosinkies and rosinkie bread. And this is then called the plum pudding model. That was also the rosinkie cook model genoemd. Well, that was not the end of the story. Because then came a Danish scientist, a Deense wetenskapelike het gekom. He used work from people like Einstein and Max Planck, and he then came to a conclusion, but wait a minute, the atom is a bit more complicated than this. He had also begun to think that the atom is more complicated than this. And he, after some research and calculations, said the atom consists in the middle of a positive nucleus. In the middle, it has a positive current. And around the nucleus, there are or orbits or called energy levels, that's energy flocker. And there are several of them around. And he proposed this about these energy levels. He went further, Niels Boer went further, and he said there are two electrons in the first level. And then if you go to this one, you get eight. Eight electrons in the second level, the third level, you've got 18, and so forth. And it worked quite well for small atoms. But then they discovered it was more complicated than that. People like Schrödinger and De Broglie, especially Schrödinger then, with De Broglie and Schrödinger for all, it will come. And he said that it can't be so far away, it can't be so far away, and it can't be so far away, so it's very complicated. And then Schrodinger worked on calculations, 
They took many pages because they didn't have the computers we have today. And he suggested that electrons move in different spaces. This is one type of space. Another one is a circular space. Now you now they see when they show the atom, they show the nucleus, and then they show all funny paths and things going around the atom. It's not just nice circular paths anymore. Because the atom is far more complicated. That was by me complicated as it was afankelijk dan die wetenschappelijk is. And to make matters even worse, another Englishman discovered the neutron. Okay, to the neutron on deck, no English wetenschappelijk. And then they said, wait a minute, what's going on here? So today, when we draw the atom, we do draw it simply, like this type of, uh, like, almost like boer, but we do remember that the electrons actually move in all weird paths, not just simple circular paths. Ons weer die atome se elektrone beweeg in baie komplekse bane, maar die kern bestaan uit twee deelkies uit. Van die deelkies is positief gelaai, en van die deelkies het geen lading nie. You know the nucleus consists of positively charged particles and also neutral particles. So here you have, in the nucleus, you have got your neutral ones, they are called neutrons. You have neutral deelkies, what neutrone genoem word. And then you've got your positive particles called protons, your positive deelkies, what protone genoem word. And then outside, around it, you've got your electrons. En bijt om met die elektrone. So the nucleus, the kern, is neutron and proton. The nucleus has neutrons and protons. And around it, you've got electrons that move around. The electron is by to move. So now it's far more complicated. But fortunately, at school level, at eight and nine level, this is all you need to know about the basic structure of the atom. Thank you for watching.